and welcome to Sonya Podcast. Next on my woman history is Amy Tan. It's the author of the book, The Joy Luck Club. It explored the relationship between Chinese women and their Chinese-American daughter. It was the longest run in New York Times bestseller in 1989. The novel has been translated into 25 different languages since it was first published. Amy Tan was born in Oakland, California. Her family lived in several communities in Northern California before settling in Santa Clara. Both of her parents were Chinese immigrants. Her father, John Tan, was an electrical engineer and Baptist minister who came to America to escape the turmoil of the Chinese Civil War. The harrowing early life of her mother, Daisy, inspired Amy Tan novel, The Kitchen Good Wife in China. Daisy had divorced an abusive husband but lost custody of her three daughters. She was forced to leave them behind when she escaped on the last boat to leave Shanghai before the commit before the communist take over in 1949. Her marriage to John Tan produced three children, Amy and her two brothers. Tragedy struck the Tan family when Amy's father and oldest brother both died of brain tumors within a year of each other. Miss Tan moved her surviving children to Switzerland where Amy finished high school, but by this time, mother and daughter were in constant conflict. Mother and daughter did not speak for six months after Amy Tan left the Baptist College. Her mother had selected for her to follow her boyfriend to San Jose City College. Tan further defined her mother by abandoning the pre-med course her mother had urged to pursue the study of English in logistics. She received her bachelor and master's degrees in these fields at San Jose State University in 1974. She and her boyfriend, Louis DeManti, were married. They were later to settle in San Francisco. The Mantine, an attorney, took up the practice of tax law while Tan studied for a document in logistics, first at the University of California at San Cruz, later on Berkeley. By this time, she had developed an interest in the problems of the developmentally disabled. She left the document program in 1976 and took a job as a language development consultant to the Almade County Association for Retarded Citizens and later directed a training project for developmentally disabled children. With a partner, she started a business writing firm providing speeches for the salesmen and and executives of large corporations. After the dispute with her partner, who believed she could give up writing to concentrate on the management side of the business, she became a full-time freelance writer. Among her business works written under non-Chinese sounding were a 26-chapter booklet called Tele- Telecommunication and You, produced by produced for IBM. Amy Tam prosper as a business writer. After a few years in business for herself, she has saved enough money to buy a house for her mother. She and her husband live well on a double income, but the harder Tan work at her business, the more dissatisfied she became. The work has become a compulsive habit, and she sought relief in creative efforts. She studied jazz, piano, hoping to channel the musical training forced on her by her parents, and childhood into a more personal experience. She also began to write fiction. Her first story, Endgame, won her admission to the Squaw Valley Writer Workshop taught by novelist Oakley Hall. The story appeared in FM Literary Magazine and was reprinted in 17. A liter- literary agent, Sandra Dick Dick Jishra, was impressed enough with Tan's second story. Waiting between the trees to take on a client encouraged Tan to complete an entire volume of stories. Just as she was embarking on this new career, Tan mother fell ill. Amy Tan promised herself to, that if her mother recovered, she would take her to China to see the daughters who had been left behind almost 40 years before. Miss Tan regained her health and mother and daughter departed for China in 1987. The trip was a revolution for Tan. It gave her a new perspective on her own difficult relationship with her mother and inspired her to complete the book of stories she had promised her agent. On the basic of the complete chapters in synopsis of the others, Dykstra found a publisher for the book now called The Joy Luck Club with a 50000 advance from G.P. Putman Sons. Tan quit business writing and finished her book in a little more than four months. 
Upon its publication in 1989, Tam Book won enthusiastic reviews and spent eight months on the New York Times bestseller list. The paperback rights sold for $1.23 million. The book has been translated into 17 languages, including Chinese. Her subsequent novel, The Kitchen Goods Wife, 1991, confirmed her reputation and enjoyed excellent sales. In the following year, Amy Tan published two books for children, The Moon Lady in the Sack Wall, and two more novels, The Hundred Secrets Census, 1995, and The Bone Settlers, 2001. In 2003, she published The Opposite of Fate, a book of musing and autobiographies in which she disclosed her experience with Lyme disease, a chronic bacterial infection contraction from the bite of a common tick. Amy Tan's cast went undiagnosed for years before she received proper treatment, and she suffered intense physical pain, mental impairment, and seizures for years. Lyme disease made it impossible for Amy to continue writing. With medication, she became able to control the worsens of her illness and have resumed writing. But she also spent much of her energy raising awareness of Lyme disease, promoting early detection and treatment, and advocating for the rights of Lyme disease patients. With her illness under control, Amy Tan has completed two works of fiction. Her novel, Saving Fr- Fish from Drowned and appeared in 2005. In 2013, she published one of the most ambitious books to the date, The Valley of Amusement, an epic saga told from the point of view of a part American girl raised among the courtes of Sing- Shanghai in the first year of the 20th century. Tan published a powerful memoir where the past began in 2017. The book recounts her difficult childhood and complex relationship with her mother as well as her evolution as a writer and calibration with her long-term editor, Dan, in an intense exploration of the relationship between memory and creativity. So she's another um, person that's and great history that we we are talking about Amy Tan, which is a, a Chinese lady who wrote is a best book author. And I'd like to thank you for listening to Sony Podcast. Please give a five star review on Speaker Spotify. How we have this podcast? I please you. You can follow me at S O N I D I A nine seven nine five Instagram. You can call me here at S V seven six six seven five two at gmail dot com. Go to my website, http.podcast slash wordpress.com. Follow my son sounds on Instagram. He has his album out on Apple, Spotify, Miss Carr. She have her own affirmation, T-J-V-U-C-L-I-H. You have a book called Black Girl in Orange. King Flex on SoundCloud. Female Reforming New York City. Have a blessed night.